a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. Sorry for my uh, absence earlier in the week. I will, uh, if you are interested, I will give you the uh, TMI update at the uh, end of today's program. But uh, suffice it to say, I am very glad to be back behind the microphone and uh, Missy is doing a little bit better than she was earlier in the week. So again, I thank you for your thoughts and your prayers. We're going to be talking with uh, Nikki Gozer coming up here in just a minute or two about her column at Town Hall, why she will not be voting for Kamala Harris come November. Uh, I had a feeling that was going to be the case with Dickie, but uh, her rationale and her explanation for why Kamala Harris will not get her vote is worth talking about. So we'll uh, kick up that conversation here in just a minute. Before we do, though, let's talk about this for a second. Economists are warning us about massive tax hikes that could hit your IRA and 401k hard. With inflation rising and global uncertainty, it is no wonder the central banks and many Americans are turning to gold. Now, if you haven't thought about gold yet, now's the time. Trust Priority Gold to help you diversify your savings with gold and silver. When you text GOLDEN to 80405 gold you can get a free gold info guide and see if you qualify for free shipping and storage. Experts agree physical gold is one of the best ways to fortify your savings. Act now to get your portfolio working for you while the market is golden. Text GOLDEN to 80405 gold to learn more. That's GOLDEN to 80405 gold. And now let's uh, kick off our conversation with Nikki Gozer from the Crime Prevention Research Center about why she will not be casting a vote for Kamala Harris this November. Take a look and listen. Nikki, it's good to see you again. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Hey, Cam. Good to see you, and thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So, you know, you've got your piece at Town Hall ran earlier this week um, talking about why you're not voting for Kamala Harris. Now, I have to say, going into this, maybe I was wrong, but Nikki, I didn't anticipate you voting for Kamala Harris in the first place, um, simply because of her anti-Second Amendment views. But as you point out, it's not just that it's bad enough that she wants to wage war on our right to keep and bear arms, but when you look at all of the policies that she supported from just a public safety standpoint, um, you know, the, the real damage is being done uh, and, and would be done if she had the ability to put these sorts of policies in place nationwide. Absolutely, I mean, just look at her support for the defund police movement that movement has had very long-term damage on police departments across the nation. And, you know, police officers had a, a very difficult job anyway, but that has made it even more difficult with very important resources and money, you know, being taken away from these uh, departments across the nation. And they're hemorrhaging still. I mean, there are good officers uh, who have already left retired um those who are set to retire you know it has caused real morale issues and you know they've had to lower standards for hiring uh, people to fill uniforms and whenever you do that you risk um having even more uh, potential issues and, and some of the very same issues that the defund police movements were you know initially concerned about um, I'm afraid that it's going to cause even even more issues. And she supported it. Kamala Harris supported all of that. And, um, you know, it's made it difficult for people to get emergency response. And a lot of people aren't even reporting crimes anymore because they just feel like, you know, what's the point? I mean, these people aren't being prosecuted. You've got liberal DAs that are not prosecuting these crimes. And it, it's very disturbing, plus her support for gun control. There, There is not a gun control policy out there that Kamala Harris does not support. She supports every gun control measure. And I point out in my piece, you know, so many of these gun control laws, they really only impact good law-abiding people. Criminals, by their very nature, they're not going to follow the law. They're not going to follow these gun control laws. Kamala supports gun-free zones. Yeah, I, well, listen, I mean, going back to her time as district attorney in San Francisco, uh, that's where she was when the Heller case was decided. And she co-authored this amicus brief urging the Supreme Court to uphold D.C.'s gun ban, uh, saying there is no individual right to keep and bear arms. The courts have never interpreted the Second Amendment to protect an individual right to keep and bear arms. So D.C.'s handgun ban, that's perfectly fine. The storage requirements that require those who had purchased a firearm or a handgun before the ban went into effect uh, and had legally registered those guns, they had to keep them 
locked up, disassembled, ammunition stored separately. They were worthless for self-defense in the home. Kamala Harris was fine with that, right? Now, meanwhile, when she was a senator from California, she had the LAPD providing security for her. Even when she was in places like Stockton, California, and other cities, she had LAPD officers serving as her personal Praetorian guard. So she's okay with the idea of, I guess, important people being protected, right? But everyday folks like you and I, we're just supposed to rely on that 911 call and hope the police get there in time, right? Because as you say, she's never, and I'll, I'll, I'll happily retract this statement if it can be proven wrong, but to the best of my knowledge, she has never said anything expressing support for our right to keep and bear arms in self-defense, as she certainly has never cast a vote or, or, or uh, challenged a gun control law that inhibited or infringed on that right. Right. You know, in my piece, I explain, I, I, it baffles me how any anyone, but I was focusing on women in my piece, mm -hmm. how a woman could possibly su support Kamala Harris if they're at all concerned for their safety and the safety of their loved ones. Uh, Kamala Harris has made it even more difficult for people to get the help that they need from law enforcement. But she's also not in support of you being able to protect yourself. So there's no one, you know, there, she doesn't want people to be there to really protect you when it comes right down to it. Because right. all police are racist, all police are bad, according to her, you know, and the defund police movement. And, you know, they don't trust the police. You're not going to get the response that you need when you need it. Police know they can't be anywhere and everywhere at any time. And I believe law enforcement, are, they're mostly very, very good people that want to make a difference in their communities and, and help make our communities safe. But they've been so demoralized um, by this movement and Kamala Harris and, and others that it's very, very difficult for them to um, keep people to fill uniforms. And then you can't even protect yourself because they keep supporting these gun-free zones. So how are people, especially people like myself, who are victims of, of violent crime, how are they supposed to be able to protect themselves? I've, I've got a stalker that's gonna be released from prison. It's terrifying for me. I need to be able to protect myself anywhere and everywhere I am. And I want that for other women as well. They should absolutely have the right and the ability to protect themselves wherever they wherever they are. And I, I guess their attitude is, well, Nikki, we're going to protect you, right? With all of these common sense gun safety regulations, uh, you know, your stalker doesn't isn't going to be able to get a hold of a gun. Uh, because of all of these gun laws that we're putting in place, right? I guess that's I guess that's philosophy. Now, I, I mean, in practice, we know that that's absolutely absurd. Even in the most gun controlled states like California and New York, criminals are getting a hold of guns easily, right? In fact, it's it's much easier to get a gun illegally in California than it is to get a gun legally. It's much easier to get a gun illegally in New York City than it is to get a gun lawfully. Um, so I don't think that attitude makes any sense. But I guess. I mean, that's that's the nicest interpretation, right? The not so nice interpretation is that, well, we don't trust you with a gun, Nikki. We don't trust Cam with a gun. We don't trust the American people with their Second Amendment rights. And so we have to take them away uh, in the name of public safety, right? Or maybe just in the name of control. Right. More and more, I'm starting to think that it is in the name of control, unfortunately. Yeah, well... You know, the good news is I think that we've got um, we've got a lot of folks like you out there who are helping to spread the word about the dangers of what a uh, Harris Walls administration would look like. And you know, you talk about gun free zones. Let's talk about just the right to carry. Right? Tim Walls uh, has opposed right to carry reciprocity. Kamala Harris called the Bruin decision. I think she said it was contrary to common sense and the Constitution, uh, which is bizarre that a a, a ruling that says yes you the right to keep your arms does protect the right to bear arms it, it, it is somehow you know an affront to the constitution but you're right they don't want you to carry anywhere right they don't want you to be able to protect yourself with a firearm um their their attitude is basically we're all better off if the only people who have guns are those who have guns illegally that's it 
It's incredibly disturbing. Look, there are defensive gun use cases every single day in this country. I could have very easily said, oh, you know, this, my husband was murdered by a man, a stalker, my stalker with a gun. I could have turned, I suppose, and said, oh, I hate guns. Guns are bad. But I don't hate guns. I don't believe that guns are bad. I know that guns in good law-abiding citizens' hands can help save innocent lives, and they do. There are defensive gun use stories out there that the mainstream media absolutely does not cover. Um, But you can go to our website at crimeresearch.org, and you can see defensive gun use cases. They happen every single day in this country. It's just not spoken about. Yeah, and and some of them, um, many of them, uh, you know, involve domestic violence. They uh, involve abusers. They involve stalkers. And I confess, when I see those stories at Bearing Arms, I, I, I try to highlight those. Um, because this is something that you're right. Maybe it gets covered in the local media for a day and then it disappears. These stories are hardly ever covered by the national media. Um, and yet when you see a woman who has taken out an order of protection, right? She's taken all of those steps to keep herself safe, uh, but she or a family member or you know somebody else in the household ends up having to use a firearm to defend her when her stalker and abuser you know, breaks into the home. Um, why are we talking about those stories more, right? Why does the media downplay those stories instead of, again, I think acknowledging that the human right of self-defense and our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms is another layer of protection for people who need it, particularly those vulnerable women who are escaping abuse, uh, who are dealing with a stalker. I, I, you know, I guess I, I know why we don't have that conversation or why it's just people like you and I that have that conversation when the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about this stuff. But again, when they ignore this, it, it's a it's a form of bias, right? It's bias by omission. They don't want people thinking about, well, maybe I should, uh, you know, go ahead and, and get some training, get my concealed carry license if I don't live in a constitutional carry state, but maybe I need to do more than just take out that order of protection because I don't know that that piece of paper alone is gonna keep me safe. Absolutely. You know, I helped Tennessee um, get the new lifetime order of protection law on the books. And, you know, I hear people in the pro-gun movement talk about, oh, it's just a piece of paper. And I say, you're absolutely right. It is just a piece of paper. Um, I I feel like it's still important, but I always make sure and let people know you have got to have a backup plan. You've got to. And I believe the best backup plan is to have something on your hip. Um, You know, obviously you need to do what you have to do and what you think is right for you. But I, I don't think telling women to run and hide and change their name and change their location and try to hide their address and don't travel alone, get a dog, get a rape whistle. You know, some of that advice may be useful, but I I believe in empowering women to actually be able to stop the threat. And look, a gun is a great equalizer and it, I believe is the best way to stop that threat. Absolutely, I do too. And. You know, getting back to the order of protection, um, you know, yes, it is just a piece of paper for those who would choose to violate it. Hopefully, again, uh, you know, if somebody has an order of protection against them, they're going to think, okay, I don't want to ruin my life by violating this order of protection, so I'm going to leave that person alone. But if they don't, that it's still, it's it's at least a paper trail, right? So you can, you know, because listen, if you are forced to use a firearm in self-defense, there's going to be a police investigation, regardless of the circumstance, right? No matter how clear cut this might be. Um, and the situation may not be so clear cut. So that at least provides a paper trail for you to say, look, there was a documented trail of abuse. There was a reason why I was scared of this individual. There was a reason why I told them and the courts told them, you're not allowed to come near me, um, which I think is helpful from a legal standpoint, uh, if nothing else, if you are, again, if that abuser or that stalker treats that order of protection as if it's just a piece of paper. Um, so I'm with you. You know, I, I don't think there needs to be, I mean, my God, if, again, if we're dealing with somebody who's threatening your life, you know, <laughs> yeah, have a backup plan. Have a backup to the backup plan, right? This is your life that we're talking about. And and people need to take those threats seriously. So 
Don't just depend on a piece of paper. Don't just depend on a firearm. Do everything that you need to do to keep yourself safe. But as you say, it, it, it also, we do want these people to be empowered, but they should not have to live their lives in fear. They should not have to live their life as a victim, afraid to look over their shoulder, right? That, that again, that just continues that abuse. That, that continues the harm being done by that individual. Absolutely. Well, again, I, I am always just struck by your courage and your bravery and your willingness to speak out uh, in support, not only of what you believe, but really to help others. So I hope that people will read this. I hope that they will, uh, uh, you know, take away, um, again, the history of Kamala Harris's attacks on public safety, the attacks on our right to keep and bear arms. And again, where does that leave us, right? If, if the police are bad, we can't protect ourselves. <laughs> again, where does that leave vulnerable people in dangerous situations, right? Exactly. Well, Nikki, again, thank you so much. And if folks want to learn more about the Crime Prevention Research Center, again, can you give us the website? Yes, that's crimeresearch.org. All right, Nikki, as always, it is good to see you. Thank you for everything you do. And I look forward to talking to you again very soon. Thanks for having me on. Good to see you. My thanks once again to Nikki for joining us on the program today. And I really do appreciate uh, her joining us on the show.